Hi, and welcome to the Library Workshop, Savvy Ways to Avoid Plagiarism. I'm Julie Cornett, one of the librarians, and I will be walking you through this presentation. The image I've used here on the title slide has an attribution underneath it, title, author, and how it is licensed. I made sure to locate an image that I was allowed to use, and I've given the author who took it credit. This is the basic premise of avoiding plagiarism. Giving credit where credit is due. Let's look at the Oxford English Dictionary definition of plagiarism, the action or practice of taking someone else's work, idea, etc., and passing it off as one's own. Literary theft. See how I've introduced the quote and then put the entry word in parentheses after the quote? This is called the parenthetical or in-text citation, and whether you use a direct quote or summarized an outside information source, you need to include an in-text citation, which then corresponds to the full citation on your works cited or reference page, like the example here at the bottom of the slide. Usually the in-text citation will have an author's last name. However, an entry from a dictionary like this has no listed author, so the entry word is used in the parenthetical citation. In this workshop, I offer you some savvy tips to avoid plagiarism. Don't procrastinate. Ask a librarian. Know when to use quotes versus paraphrase versus summary. Use library catalogs and databases. They cite the source for you. Bookmark the MLA and APA guides. Take Library C100 or Library C111. Plagiarism is literary theft, and there are steep penalties for committing plagiarism, whether it's intentional or not. Failing an assignment to suspension based on the severity and frequency. Aside from these fear-based reasons, however, avoiding plagiarism makes you look good. Giving credit to the outside sources you've used to write your paper proves that you've done your homework and that you were contributing to the scholarly conversation you're a part of as a college student. Here are some reasons why students plagiarize. How many of them can you relate to? Most students I work with admit to procrastinating, while others acknowledge that they lack the confidence to write research papers. Many are confused by MLA and APA citation formats as well. There is a lot of information on the web that is tantalizing to simply copy, and paste into your paper. This is plagiarism and you can avoid it by learning the basics of citation. Plagiarism can be intentional like buying a paper online and submitting it as your own, or copying a friend's paper or even recycling one of your prior papers and submitting it as recent work for a current class. Plagiarism can also be unintentional. Lack of attention when citing a source. Not realizing a citation is needed when you paraphrase or summarize. Providing incorrect information in a clearly rushed citation. The thing is, all of these count as plagiarism and have the same penalties. The best rule of thumb is to cite any time you get information from an outside source. People's ideas are their own intellectual property. This list gives some concrete tips of when to cite. When you copy or paraphrase or summarize from a print, or audiovisual source, or even from an interview, cite it. Even using digital media, art, and data created by someone else, cite it. When you write a paper, much of the content will be your own interpretation and analysis of outside information sources. You don't need to cite yourself. If you include a poem you wrote or your own artwork, you don't need to cite it. Also, this list of common knowledge includes items you don't necessarily have to cite, such as folklore, common sense, and well-known facts and social events, like the fact that George Washington was the first president of the United States. Let's take a short quiz. Okay, throughout this workshop, I've mentioned quotations, paraphrase, and summary. Differentiating between these will really help you avoid plagiarism. 
When you use information from outside sources to support your own arguments, you need to decide how you will present that information in your paper. Will you use the author's exact language, word for word? Will you summarize a long passage into a brief synopsis? Here are some tips to help you decide. Summary is when you shrink a large amount of information into your own main points. Paraphrase is putting a passage of text into your own words. Quoting is when you use a passage of text word for word in quotation marks. Let's take a look at each to decide which is best, depending on what type of paper you're writing. Summary is good when you are referring to something big and complex, like a scientific study or long novel, and you want to provide the main ideas to make your point. You do this when space limitation is an issue, and you always want to use your own words to capture the main points. Let's see an example. Let's look at this passage in red from astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. Only three of the naturally occurring elements were manufactured in the Big Bang. The rest were forged in the high temperature hearts and explosive remains of dying stars, enabling subsequent generations of solar of star systems to incorporate this enrichment, forming elements, uh, forming planets, and in our case, people. Sorry, I really botched that. Take a look at the summary underneath. Notice how it is much shorter than the original text, instead of naturally occurring. The summary uses the Earth's, which captures the original meaning. Instead of writing explosive remains of dying stars, the summary uses the word solar system. The in-text citation is in parentheses. The author's last name, Tyson, is listed next to the page number where the information came from. So even though there was no direct quote, the information was cited. And in this example, it's an MLA format. Let's look at paraphrasing. You use a paraphrase of the original text when you want to keep the author's focus intact. If the author has a great idea you want to share, you paraphrase. And here's the important thing. You use your own words. This doesn't simply mean you exchange a word here and there. You need to change the entire phrasing as well. Often a paraphrase will be longer than the original text, though it could be shorter if the original text was very flowery and wordy. As with summary, you need to cite the source you paraphrased from. A cool idea that is useful when, you, when you're looking at the original text that you want to put in a paraphrase, Put it down, don't look at it, and then see if you can um, write down the main in the main point in your own words. Okay, here's that same quote from Neil deGrasse Tyson with the paraphrase below. The paraphrase reads, According to renowned astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, only three of the elements in our periodic table were present on Earth after the Big Bang. The rest of the elements that compose our planet, and by extension our human selves, became part of planet Earth as dying stars exploded and sent their scattered remains into future and distant star systems that included our own. 215 to 216. The paraphrase in this example is longer than the original text. It introduces the author of the quote in the first sentence. And much of the words and phrasing are changed. Instead of elements, the paraphrase uses elements in the periodic table. Instead of people, the paraphrase uses our human selves. The paraphrase doesn't just change those words, though. The phrasing is changed while keeping the author's intent intact. And look at the citation in parentheses. Since the author was already introduced in the first sentence, only the page numbers of the original text are included in the parentheses. No quotations were used because no direct text was quoted. Okay, now let's look at how to handle a direct quote. Here's the original phrase from Neil deGrasse Tyson with a short quotation pulled from 
the phrase below. The sentence incorporates a direct quote from Neil deGrasse Tyson's original text, and that quote has quotation marks around it. The in-text citation includes the author's last name and the page numbers where the text appeared in the book. Quoting is a very common way to avoid plagiarism, but here are some tips. You should use quotations only when the exact wording is important to retain meaning, or you think it is important to use the author's original words in your paper. If you're writing a paper comparing two works of literature, you would probably include several direct quotes to point out use of language, for example. Some tips for using quotations. Don't overuse them and avoid long quotations when a short one will suffice. Always introduce and explain your quotations instead of dropping them in unexpectedly. Also, be sure you understand the quotation and don't rep misrepresent the author's opinion. Oh, and if all the quotes you used come from one source, you are limiting your credibility and lack support for your claims. Let's take a look at a quote fail. Albert Einstein was a great man and a great scientist. He was one of the most advanced thinkers of our age. Quote, the important thing is not, is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. Einstein quotes, 2012. This is a quote fail because the quote is just dropped in without an introduction. The sentence before the quote doesn't really have anything to do with the quote. The quote does not fit. A better quote would be one that illustrates that Einstein was one of the most advanced thinkers of our age. The in-text citation is there, which is good. In this example, the in-text citation is done in APA format, which includes the year the source was published. This quote was taken from an article with no author, so the title of the article was used in parentheses instead. And it doesn't appear to have a page number, which can sometimes happen, although you want to direct your reader to a page or paragraph or heading if you can. Let's take a closer look at in-text or parenthetical citations. Whether you use APA or MLA, the idea is to include information such as the author's name, the source's publication date, if it's MLA or APA rather, and the exact location of the information within the source material. Here's an MLA example and an APA example. Note that MLA includes author's last names separated by the word and followed by the page number. The APA example has the author's last name separated by the ampersand sign, then a comma, then the year, then a comma, then a P period, then the page number. In both examples, the final period is placed after the parenthetical citation and not after the quotation marks. Every in-text citation will have a corresponding full citation in the works cited or reference page. The full citation includes lots more info, such as title of article, sources, database, URL, etc. Students dread MLA and APA citation, so we've created some very handy guides located on the Syracuse Library website that you should bookmark. Go to www.syracuso.edu slash library and click on the citation Help MLA APA tab on the left navigation pane. There you will find comprehensive guides that show you how to do in-text citations and full citations as well as how to format your paper. Paper templates are provided. Quick guides to print out and refer to are available. These guides can help you avoid plagiarism by covering all the different ways to cite, all the many information sources you might use in your paper. So now you know some savvy tips for avoiding plagiarism, aside from knowing how to cite sources and mastering summary, paraphrase, and quotations. Here are a few other tips. Don't procrastinate 
Start your research early and use our library databases. Did you know our catalog and databases have built-in citation generator? So when you find an article or an ebook, you can just click the cite button and voila. Also, let me point out how to contact a librarian. On the library webpage, you can send um, and submit your questions to us via email or directly using a form. We're available for drop-in Zoom throughout the week. And you can chat 24-7 with us using our chat box. Our job is to help students locate and cite information for their papers, so please reach out to us for help. Lastly, we offer two classes, Library C100 and Library C111, that teach you how to master library research and citation, and also how to make sense of living in an information-saturated society. Okay, one more quiz, and then you are done. I hope you've learned some savvy tips to avoid plagiarism, and we hope to connect with you soon. Contact us.